welcome to the Pantheon Plus Rewind. What's up and welcome to episode 126 of the Pantheon Plus Rewind. We're keeping tabs on the development of Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, an MMO in development that's looking to bring us back to the days of grouping, open worlds, class identity, and many other forgotten tenets of game design. This week, we're listening in on VR's year in review stream, shouting out some community content, and saying hello to our keepers. As we near the end of 2022, it's time to reflect and remember on this November long weekend. We salute all the warriors, paladins, rangers, and clerics who have forged the armor that we all wear and take for granted every day. So join me, Theric, and my valiant co-host, Desrin, for this week's Rewind. Oof! All right, Desrin, we uh, finally got our first blast of winter here. We got a major storm rolled through here last night. Um, I was supposed to go pick up my son at his girlfriend's house at around midnight, 11 o'clock, and he ended up just sleeping over because I <laughs> could not leave the house. We were snowed in. It was brutal. I think we got a couple of feet of snow. So, Oof. dang that that's so it, it's so funny to me uh, because as much as the Pacific Northwest here in the U.S. gets flack for you know crummy weather, mm-hmm. every single time that the other areas in the world uh, or in this in the states have bad weather, it's sunny here. <laughs> those exact opposite so i know if it's sunny here everyone else is getting <laughs> blizzards and and tropical storms and you're, you're like stuff. the hipster the hipster weather capital of the world not only the hipster like regular hipster capital of the world but everything you have to do the opposite of what everybody else is doing at all times is yeah, what exactly I'm exactly yeah. <laughs> nice oh boy so the weather's one thing but i also wanted to mention something else that happened this week that was really cool and that was we were playing embers adrift for our for our tuesday or thursday stream and i actually had somebody come up and say like hey uh are you from the rewind and i was like yeah that's that's me and desert and, that show. <laughs> and so this was roseanne i'm not sure i'm pronouncing it right but i just wanted to give him a quick shout out because he was super cool he just came up and he's like I've been listening since the very beginning and like you guys do a really good job and I really enjoy it. And we talked a little bit about how the show has changed over the year or years, I guess now it was just cool, man. That's like, I just, that blows me away that that actually happens. <laughs> so. That is really neat. You know, I wonder if this is the same person, uh, cause uh, this happened to me, uh, maybe a couple weeks ago. Oh, really? Uh, and, uh, I, I can't remember the person's name off the top of my head, but, uh, I was like kind of cracking up a little bit, you know, um, uh, sharing it with a real life friend, you know, the the joke about celebrity. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm like, ah, it's, it's a small community, but it still feels really cool. Just especially folks that maybe aren't always at the premiere or something. Right? Yeah. Uh, and like names you don't recognize. Right. You're like, oh, I never I've never heard your name before. I've seen you. I've never seen you in chat, but just like, you know, sort of coming out of the woodwork. And it's so surreal. I can't even believe yeah. that. But yeah it's really so cool roseanne, to shout that out yeah if you're listening roseanne man awesome thank you for coming up and saying hi that was super cool uh so speaking of super cool also our adventuring party uh, as always yeah. <laughs> super cool bunch of people uh we got ziplocks on the dark Murro. we got sparrow on the elf ranger bounty coat on the human wizard screech on the scar bard wiki woo on the human enchanter shuriken on the dwarf cleric horsesaurus on the human warrior fury wrath fury wrath on the archive summoner pavejo on the gnome wizard Sarah Avienda on the Elf Ranger, Churro Dude on the Halfling Dire Lord, and finally Galarine Moonsong on the Elf Ranger. And and we need to congratulate the winners from last week's yes. giveaway. Yeah, before we get too ahead of ourselves here, I want to give a huge shout out to Graham Olson, who walked away with the Black Rose Pledge that we gave away. Uh, we also had Scott Farnham pick up a Watcher's Pledge, and Justin as well also grabbed a Watcher's Pledge. And I can tell you that they were all very jazzed to win, but I want to give a shout out to Graham (laughs) who took that Black Rose Pledge, like you and I had hoped, Desrin, stacked it on top of his existing pledge and is now a PA eligible tester. So Makes me so happy. Yeah, me too, man. He was so excited um, and he was actually there for the VR dev stream, which we're going to talk about on the show here. He was in chat and he just kept asking, when's the next PA session? When's the next PA session? (laughs) (laughs) Welcome. Welcome to the club. (laughs) Yeah. Welcome to like the the land of anticipation because you're always wanting to know when it is now, now that you're eligible for it. It just made me laugh so much when I saw that. But uh, congrats to everybody. 
And and stay tuned because uh, we're going to be doing another giveaway pretty soon here. And make sure you're uh, subbed and turned on notifications if you want to find out. But um, you know, it's the holiday season is is almost upon us. Given uh, you know, and I, I noticed this the other night when I was out walking the dog that people in my neighborhood have their lights on and their tree up already. So <laughs> holiday season has clearly already begun. Uh, you say already, <laughs> but I mean, here in the states, uh, maybe this is just my upbringing showing, but. Uh... Some people just don't take them down. So, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Christmas year round. That loses all the specialness of it to me. I'm not judging, yeah. but uh, the many uh, utility uses of uh, Christmas lights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess there is that. There is the utility of it, but uh, yeah. So stay tuned because we're going to be doing another pledge giveaway real, real soon. And as as always, thank you everybody for supporting the rewind. Um, if you want to get your name read on the show, like you heard, we've got our Patreon linked below for that. And everyone that throws in a super chat during the YouTube premiere or a super thanks in the comments gets their name on that highly prestigious best scrolling banner. Uh, you'll see it during the VR news and notes section. And as always, you know, this podcast is made by the community for the community. So cheers to all of you. And Absolutely. with that, Desiree, that was yeah. that was well said, man. Thank you. Are you ready to go? Absolutely. Let's dig in. This week in Visionary Realms News and Notes. All right, so we're talking about the development update from Pantheon, from Visionary Realms rather, happened on Thursday, November 10th. Uh, this was called the 2022 Year in Review and Q&A session. Uh, we had the whole, not the whole team, but big portion of six, the- uh, Six people, six people cats to herd uh These six cats to herd are you including ben dean in uh in chat as well because that was sort of a neat little addition that he wasn't on the screen his name wasn't there but he was part of it too so nice yeah he's just kind of lurking lurking in there it was well, it was pretty great ben. yeah i, I mean i mean ben six dean. people uh, as minus is technically the host i guess i i consider him the cat herder um although <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how well it worked out. The cats kind of got out of the bag, uh, I guess. <laughs> that wasn't even in the notes. I came up with that on the fly. I'm pretty Dude. proud of that. Dude, professional level podcasting right there. That is that is R- really though. Like the so first off, before we even get into like what was said, there's something about this promo shot, um, the, the, you know, that they did for the little material to announce like the time and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's obviously, uh, oh, I wish I could find the other image, uh, but it's Avalia in Throne yes. Fast. Uh, yep. we've seen this before, um, but this looks much better <laughs> mm-hmm. than what we've seen before. Um, and I can't help but shout that out and it, it's yeah. still not final, but it's a nice looking shot. I like the, um, I like how the moonlight is sort of reflecting on the cliffs, um, a little uh-huh. bit. It's got quite a bit of definition on those cliffs. I like the little, the little tavern sign that's hanging there. That's, that's a little, uh, nice touch. Um, but yeah, every time we see one of these, uh, screenshots, it looks like there's a little bit of improvement, a little bit more, uh, I don't know what's the, a little more detail to it. But, this uh, is probably the first like shot here that I would almost describe as like moody. Like mm. there, there's a, a good amount of mood that comes through in this shot that I feel has crossed a threshold <laughs> mm-hmm. um, from being like, you know, again, it's still very work in progress. Right. But, you mm-hmm. know, we say that all the time and, and a lot of times being early or being work in progress doesn't get everything across, you know? Yeah. And while, you know, details I'm sure will continue to improve. There was just something about this shot that, uh, just kind of tickled me a little bit. Just it, it gave me a mood. I like that. Anyway, <laughs> it gave you a mood. Well, speaking of giving you a mood, uh, the dev stream was quite the mood. It was, uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, there wasn't a lot of hard information, a lot, not a lot of uh, news coming out of this thing, but it was, it was definitely a, a, a friendly fireside chat, which I guess you know, with the tavern shingle hanging there in this in the shot, is sort of appropriate. Now let's talk oh, about yeah. the good call. Yeah. I, I did want to like, like point out that for anyone that hasn't listened to this, um, I, and I say listen on purpose, uh, I figure may as well get this out of the way. Um, there was no new footage in right. this. Uh, so may as well just, you know, <laughs> set the expectations now. Um, so on one hand, you know, oh, no new footage or whatever. Um, but you can listen to it as a podcast. Um, and since we are a podcast, I figure may as well point that out. Now, 
Um, obviously, we're going to try to summarize and pick out the things that we enjoyed. But uh, there's a certain amount of the uh, the vibe the that we can't really convey the dynamic, uh, <laughs> how fun it was, really. Um, so it's a really you know, good point. If, you could if, listen to this on audio and get exactly the same effect. You know, yes, and the effect very... I would argue would be worth it, but we'll we'll get into that. We 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 can right. st- start actually talking about what was talked about. <laughs> yeah, let's 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 relay some of the actual uh, maybe news that was uh, uh, communicated, I guess. And firstly, the question on everybody's mind is when is the co stream? Number one question. Here's what Joppa said. He said that they want to have it in the context of an actual pre alpha session, and that was something that we weren't sure. We didn't have 100 percent confirmation on that's what they want to do. Uh, he said it's important that it's not a curated experience. And and basically, he said they want it to be able to speak for itself. They want Pantheon to speak mm. for itself. And that is also what he meant when he said imminence in, you know, December of 2021, um, talking about what the what 2022 held for the game. He clarified that um, showing yeah. the game more, letting it do its own uh, marketing, so to speak, letting it being seen for what it is. And that means having testers more often uh, in the game more often. They want yeah. to they want to address some of the performance issues. The frames were were an issue. They said the graphic memory was being overutilized in their testing, and they want to get these optimizations done. And when that's done, that's when the stream's going to happen. And then they followed up on that a little bit with commentary from Adam. Uh, he said that uh, they've made actually some of those improvements already, and start to need to they need to validate it and get it working at a PA level, PA scale, I guess you might say. Yeah. Which and so, I, which I got to point something out about the phrasing mm-hmm. of this. Yeah. Um, w- when they talk about validation, I get like it seems like they're talking about, you know, the main way to validate is to have another PA session, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly. So f- the the gist of this that I'm getting is that um, the co stream might not be the next PA session. Yeah. Just to throw that out there. I think this is when we talked about ad hoc testing. I think this is what we're looking at. Yeah. Nice time. Yeah. Put it, put it to scale, get it ready for, get it ready for co. Um, and it, you know, these ad hoc sessions might just be super short, you know, in for a couple hours type of thing, who knows, just to get these optimizations lined up, see where they're at, scale them out and validate them. Like you say. So the goal for the next, uh, the goal is to get the performance to a point, uh, or the next PA test where they can do them more regularly. And I think that's when we're going to be seeing the co-stream. Yeah. They didn't give a date. It's still, it's still not sure when the, exactly that'll happen, but at least we know the parameters for it to happen. Yeah, and, and I got to say, I think it is really cool that they clarified that the, the intention of this stream is to not curate, uh, that it just let yeah. code kind of go wild and let the game speak for itself. Um, Cause that was something, you know, we had on our minds. It's like, you know, if worse comes to worst, are they going to have another, you know, isolated group, right? Where it's devs and co, um, you know, even if they're technically like playing, it's not like during a PA session, but it seems like that's actually a very important thing um, for them is that they get to drop co in without guidance. Um, so yeah, I, I'm which really be, happy to hear that. Yeah, which would be a new thing, which would be something that's never been, they've never done in any testing ever of the development of the game, um, which is, you know, we need exciting start... and daunting of it, I guess. exciting and daunting very much. So absolutely. Um, uh, but could be huge. Uh, the next thing they talked about was a related issue. The vinyl performance. This is Kyle Olson. Uh, their lead programmer was talking about this again, reiterating how happy they were with how vinyl performed during the last uh, pre-alpha test. Uh, they see Kyle said the number of people in one area was excellent, performed exceptionally well. They did say that there's a few a few changes needed for vinyl, um, and mostly though gameplay features, which I thought was really interesting. Desrin, I don't know if you picked up on this, but one of the things that they want to do and how this um, relates to vinyl, I, I you know I don't know, but they said having NPCs go to sleep when nobody is around is just an example of like a gameplay uh, aspect that somehow is connected to vinyl. So instead of like they just random, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it was like instead of just like they'll just take out take their routine in front of you it's like when you're not near them they'll you know they'll follow their routine anyway so did you hear that did you yep, um, yep. and uh, i i know what you're talking about they wanted to add a bit of randomization as well right uh, just right. so players can't try to game the system right um 
But uh, but this is one of those things where gameplay actually meets. Uh, sorry about my phone. <laughs> gameplay meets uh, <laughs> optimization, um, and, and this is something I'm sure you know. T- tons of engines and and everything does. But uh, the idea is obviously if the NPCs aren't around anyone, um, they don't need to take up resources, right? Right, um, so right. refining that system is obviously important, but I do want to make something just like kind of ultra clear uh, on this note about performance and vinyl and everything, uh, just in case there's any confusion. Uh, vinyl, as as far as its stability and its performance, was excellent. Um, I like that all the team members that spoke on it during this, you know, talked about like it, it's just a big win for them. Like they. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it was great uh, swimming with I think it's how Kyle put it. <laughs> swimming, um, but but and, and this you know and this, I'm gonna kind of speak a little outside I guess but this is kind of just the beginning you know there's there's plenty more that they can improve on um, and optimize and add um, like if you look at the roadmap there's still plenty of things and they kind of spoke on that that you know some of those things have been started some of those things haven't yet um, and you know uh, for the most part they're more focused on the performance of the client. So that's the the main thing I want to make sure that is Mm -hmm. understood is they're focusing on client performance at the moment, as in like your, you know, frames per second. Right. Um, Because vinyl seems to have performed amazingly well. So now it's more just about, you know, especially because this is in development, like, yeah, there's a lot of optimization to be done sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, and they're just going to knock a few things out. It sounds like just to make sure it runs pretty decent for the stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> you know, we're seeing how important that is right now in other games that we're playing when you don't, other you know, game. when you don't get that right, it, it becomes a talking point. So I really, I think that they're smart to, you don't want co-playing this game and they're, you know, him sitting there going, boy, it's the frames are dipping and diving and all over the place. and you know, you just don't want that. And because it becomes the, it becomes a talking point that nobody can really. Right. It's one of those things from. that, especially because the game isn't in its final visual state anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, most people don't understand that just because it doesn't look like super high fidelity, uh, they don't understand just how much optimization goes into games. <laughs> and so it's like, it can look bad and run bad. And it's not necessarily a bad thing for this yeah. stage. Right. But mm-hmm. it's something that's hard to communicate and you don't want it to be a talking point. So, yeah. you know, may as well just get that out of the way because it's something yeah. that I've talked about, uh, you know, with Embers a lot yeah. um, because yeah. it, it strikes me every time I play. I'm like, it looks, Very you know, nice game though. game looks okay. You know, I would, sometimes it looks good, but I don't have a bad system. It should, it no. should run better, you know? It should. <laughs> Everybody says the same thing. It should run better for what it is and it just you know like it just it should have a higher frame rate it should feel smoother and more fluid and and it just doesn't um but you know everybody's mileage varies i guess but you know again being cognizant of these kinds of issues and being cognizant of how this can impact your game in a developmental stage is very important and this is obviously direct feedback too from the last pa session so right yeah if it was something that people wanted to talk about from the last pa session they're probably like, oh, well, like, yeah, naturally, let's, you know, work on that a little bit. Yeah. And another question that got answered on this stream was actually talking about the classes. We brought this up last week, you know, asking what the status of the classes are. Uh, the question was specifically about Paladin and Warrior. Um, and so Adam said both are partially implemented right now. They get, they're working on the numbers. They want to get those numbers right first with regard to their abilities, their skills. Uh, the Warrior is next, slated to be next. <laughs> And much to Nathan's chagrin. <laughs> yep, can't help but just say that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's rough. I mean, I hear, I feel for him because it felt like it was like almost there, and then it kind of got pulled back a little more. <laughs> Poor guy. But it is what it is. Joppa also commented that there's also an aspect of itemization and uh, progression that's uh, being looked at right now to uh, make sure it's uh, dialed in where they want it before those classes get uh, implemented fully. You know, I, I want to kind of like point out something they expanded upon here a little bit uh, that's maybe outside of our, our notes. It's just uh, their approach to to like why, you know, because if you remember the quote a long time ago, they're like, yeah, we could technically whip up a class in, you know, such and such time. Um, sure. The approach they're doing here is to have like a smaller working set of things 
to tune. And once right. there's a kind of a status quo, then they can crank out all these other classes and abilities and stuff. Um, again, they're just trying to be as efficient as possible, right? Because mm -hmm. if, if they get uh, 12, no. How many yeah. classes do we have? Yeah, 12 classes. Okay, 12 classes. <laughs> yeah. um, Nine you know, if they, races, if they get you know, 12 classes in, that's also 12 classes that they have to tweak and tune every single time that they do some changes, and they're doing some fairly significant changes, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it makes sense as hard as it is for people that are waiting on certain classes. But then it's like classes are also waiting on, you know, certain vinyl things or et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's like, again, they're just trying to be really efficient and they did explain that in the video. So I may as well shout it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point to make. It's a good point to make. Uh, another, uh, another question that was brought up is what uh, new zones are the artists working on? And, and they were, they were um, admitted that their focus is right still on throne fast and Avenir's past right now. Although Silent Planes got a mention too. Uh, this and one was confirmed by though. Joppa as well. Yes, confirmed by Joppa. And we've only seen the Silent Planes in that one screenshot so far. So, man, I want to see that some more of that. Anyway, but Joppa did mention another thing. He said they're working on a dungeon like area in Thronefest and they want to have it in for the next test. Now, <laughs> this was so interesting. It's not what we thought it is, right? It was or not. It? No. No. Because you there's thought it, no you way that they just. Was I, I thought it was several Manor. Because, yeah. I mean, it just seemed like the obvious thing, right? But uh, this is so imminent um, <laughs> that uh, I I don't think they would have cranked out a whole, you know, bespoke no, if dungeon they, in that time. If they had it, they would have shown it. They wouldn't have just shown concept art if they had several. So <laughs> more, I, I think uh, this developed. is actually, uh, if you remember, uh, there's some footage of the, um, you know, uh, 2021 to 2022 stuff that they rolled as B-roll. Mm -hmm. That we yep, probably have, yep, but yep. like, um, there's a entrance to a dungeon like place, uh, in Throne Fast that we see in that footage. So I'm wondering if maybe they're expanding that, um, to make for a full group area. Just my, my guess. Yeah, very well could be. I'm, uh, I'm actually not remembering what part of that B roll footage you're thinking of right now, but we'll have to look at it together and you'll have to show me because, um, that's interesting that you've kind of got it. You kind of got it. I, that's just my guess. I, it, I'm just thinking <laughs> of places that we haven't seen yet um, yeah. that look to be dungeon esque. And I mean, nothing says dungeon like, you know, a architecture placed in the side of a mountain, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking back now and I'm remembering some things and, and I'm not going to say it because I don't remember if it was VIP or not, but I'm, I, I am recalling something that was said that might lead to might be what they're talking about here. <laughs> oh well we'll circle back on that and yeah, maybe yeah. if i can mention it next week i'll talk about it but um uh, I, yeah. I also want to point out here that they they kind of uh mentioned that they are moving uh people away from wild's end for now um so it's like it kind of sounds like more of a all hands on deck for throne fast and avp uh, right. at, at this time um and uh, again this is one of those things that i kind of questioned uh a while back when we got all the information about Wild Zen and then it's like, oh, suddenly now we're we're also in uh Throne Fast, uh Avendeer's Pass, you know, when they did the zone revamps there, and I'm like, but there's zones in between, like <laughs> mm, Yeah, there is. <laughs> and uh yeah. and so uh, apparently, you know, they've done some stuff in Wild's End, but uh now everyone's on for these um uh what's probably the more premier zones for the next who who knows how long. Um and as I think Tom said, uh, they're kind of working their way down the continent now. So <laughs> yeah. Silent Plains, right? So. That's right. And um, there's also, I mean, the Eastern Plains are, are, are in there too. If you look at the map of Kings Reach. Yep. Um, so you, there's, there's more that they haven't even, you know, talked about in name that uh, will need to be connected if you're going to get to Wild's End. So <laughs> the, yeah, that's, um, that's interesting though. That's, that's a good point up. That's a good bring up, I should say, but there's more you wanted to talk about from the stream and I'll let yeah, you, uh, I figured I'd, I'd find points. every nugget I could. Right. Um, <laughs> you're good at that because, uh, if you just listen to the stream, it's really easy to kind of just get caught up, uh, with it in a, in a fun way, I would say. Yep. Um, yep. and, and miss some little details. So I'll pick those out for you so that when you do watch the stream, uh, if you haven't already, or listened, I should say, um, 
you don't have to worry about missing something, right? So, right. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, update about... Oh, yeah. So, uh, lore stuff. Um, mm, I'm down for this. It was great to have um, JN, you know, pop in, right? Um, and totally. a- asking about, you know, what, what's he up to? And um, obviously, he's still working with all the various teams, um, especially the artists. Um, but... I, I noted this even though it wasn't, you know, something massive, but it's really good for me to hear that he's so involved um, kind of across the board uh, because I'm sure you would agree. One of the most important things about uh, a virtual world is its consistency yeah. and having the main writer have his hands in, in basically everything that involves world <laughs> world stuff uh, is really important. So, uh, but he did mention something about the daydream ascent. Um, yep. that is such a small nugget, but you know how he said it was, he's excited for what that portends throughout the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I caught that too. And, um, I, I, I need to go back and watch the daydream video again and, and look at the lore and look at the things that were said about it because, um, there's always, you know, you can always do this with JN. He likes to drop these hints and then you go back and something that didn't make sense before now does make sense. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's got this real good sense of building a world that is, uh, cooperates with itself. If you know what I mean, um, stays consistent, uh, doesn't, um, you know, doesn't break the rules that he's created when, uh, developing the creatures the people yeah. places of yeah. this world and uh, i just i mean again nice to hear from him on a stream we haven't we haven't heard from him for quite a while so the, i really the, enjoyed that. the best part about this quote to me though is um how he's saying the something about the daydream ascent that affects the rest of the world um because this is a, a bit of a criticism i have uh with a lot of mmos is how isolated uh the dungeons often are uh, they kind of are their own little pockets and they have no influence elsewhere. Uh, that's true. Yeah. That's you know, true. It, they just kind of happen to be there. Uh, and then when you zoom out and you're like, wait, but there's a, <laughs> you know, there's mm-hmm. a, a giant orc, you know, castle yeah. right next to, you know, this and it, they just, it's not a big deal or, you know, whatever. I um, mean, sometimes yeah. games try to get around that. Right. But uh, again, th- the idea that, it's not just a dungeon in its pocket, but there's something about Daydream Ascent that is relevant elsewhere. To the rest of the world, yeah. Because, you know, some of the most popular dungeons in, in MMOs over the years, if you think of the, the legendary ones, right? What comes to mind, like Vishen's Peak, right? In EverQuest. Ah, uh, yeah. It had an impact on the world because of how it was sort of created, how it, what it was about. Um, you know, there's other examples, I'm sure, where you something happens at one place and it means something for somewhere else so there's this connectivity between the um, major lore locations that i think really is impactful and and jan does a uh, good job of acknowledging i think yeah anyway so uh, again taking a tiny little tidbit there and kind of stretching it out but um i i like what that pretends for uh for the game um (laughs) nice so uh, next up, uh, Tahom also talked about the models um, because that was, you know, it's a recent subject, right? Um, and he said there are a few more that have been completed since um, since the summer. And uh, he specifically talked about the Darkmer because uh, that was next up on the docket, right? Um, and as he said, they're in the client, um, just not hooked up to replace the old models yet. So basically it kind of sounds like they're they're you know, they're cranking them out. <laughs> they're cranking them out pretty mm-hmm. nicely. Uh, just more or less waiting on them to get hooked up fully since programming is, you know, currently focusing on those optimizations that we talked about. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think he said uh, they're getting them hooked up after the next push, you know, whatever that means, right? Um, mm-hmm. Which might might just be this whole, like, optimization, you know, prepping for the next test. Um, mm-hmm. But I would love it if some of the new models were in by the co-stream. Um, yeah. But, Let me uh, ask you a question just off the top of my head. And this is off script, but so it, they did say, a, you know, they have to re- get the new, the new models into the client, but the Darkmer have never been a playable race, like in terms of like in any testing, right? Like those, there's never been a Darkmer model. 
that has been testable. Um, and I don't think I'm speaking out of NDA. They, they would, you know, this is no, been... that's, that's a good point. We have not seen. So why would they be in the client already if they're not, if like, if they're not playable or testable? Well, so maybe it's uh, like if you recall, testing. uh, the, we kind of had this issue with the human models, right? So mm -hmm. the human models have an existing thing, but every, everything is kind of based on the human model, right? Uh, right. And so you could think of the new human model as being a different race completely, just like the dark mirror is. Right. But the framework that's already set up in the game is using the setup of the old human model. So they have, I don't know how to put this. If it's like they, uh, they have to retrofit, but it's not retrofitting, you know, it's, uh, there's a base there. They just need to hook it up. Um, right. in one case, it's replacing something that's already there. In the other case, it's completely, you know, getting added, but the model is there, uh, and ready. So it, it's kind of just last steps, but, uh, I would, I would think the way they described it, that there's not any extra work for the dark mirror to hook it up. Mm -hmm. Um, just like they're replacing the old human. So, uh, I, I, it sounds like that we probably will be seeing them at the same time um, once we do see them. But knowing that the dark mirror is already done and, you know, they're probably in process of working on the next one, which uh, was that archive? <laughs> archive. Was that archive? <laughs> do I hear an archive? <laughs> do I see an archive? We'll see. I hope so. So yeah, I, I, I cannot need, wait to see them. Uh, that, yeah. that would have been such a nice thing to um, show on the stream. Yeah, I think there but, was some hope that they would show them on this stream, but um, like like you said earlier, there was no there was no new visuals to be seen. This was purely a talking stream. Uh, you know, I, I think we need some new blood in this in this world. I think we need some new faces and you know uh, characters and yeah bodies and all that kind of stuff in the next version of Terminus that comes along. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, honestly, because we're kind of at the point where a lot of stuff is changing, um, and in a relative manner fast. Uh, yeah. and so potentially, you know, next stream, uh, let's see, you know, a month from now, uh, if going by like their projected timelines about the, uh, the race remodels. Yeah. Um, which was pretty quick, right? Which was pretty quick. Like we could potentially see, th you know, three new models in game. Wouldn't that yeah. be cool? I don't it's expect pretty... it because they're probably focused on other things, but. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Darkmer. I would be shocked if we saw the Archive or the Scar, <laughs> you know. So. Well, it would be cool to see the models, even if they're not quite hooked up in in game sure. yet. But uh, sure. it's it to me, it sounds like they might even be to the point of uh, putting the finishing touches on the Archive. And so, uh, just throwing that out there because even though all, all the footage we have and stuff is the old model, uh, mm -hmm. we might go from old model to three new models. You know. Well. You know, Actually. maybe, you know, Joppa did say on the stream that he next month they would have a new word for 2023 to replace <laughs> imminence. <laughs> maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be, uh, I don't know. I'm, I was trying, I was going to say like models, but that's not a good word to use. It would be, you know, something to re <laughs> reflect new blood, you know, new, uh, new characters, something like Instead that. Instead of imminence, it's obviousness. <laughs> I, don't obviousness. Know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, speaking of Joppa, though, he ha he gave a few little nuggets here. Um, one thing I had to point out was uh, some new cave lighting. Um, <laughs> I laughed when he said that because cave lighting is a thing right now for us in Embers that we're playing. It's such a it's dude. such a weird a, a thing that looks good but affects us so negatively in some ways because of the performance <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so when he said that, I'm like, oh man, talk about like a trigger word right now. Well, so. Uh, I actually, th this stood out to me because I, I don't think this is something that we've seen yet, first of all. Um, and I, I really look forward to it because as you said, darkness is a big deal in the game. So kind of getting that right in caves and dungeons is really important. Um, just like in, in embers, darkness is a big deal in, in embers, but embers is also zone based. Uh, and there's a certain transition from uh, outside to inside. That always bothers me. Um, and so Joppa is yeah. kind of explaining that it, it, it tackles this thing that bothers me about a lot of games, um, especially MMOs, which I think are high offenders of this. 
um, where you enter a cave and there's just like some point, some arbitrary point where suddenly the lighting goes from like outside lighting to inside lighting. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> um, I can't say that I can. I can't say that I have off the top of my head. I probably have, but I, it didn't have an impact enough for me to remember it. Maybe, it, maybe I'm just super nosy. I'll, I'll throw Vanguard under the bus here because it's probably the worst offender. Um, okay. They, they okay. straight up use like completely different lighting. Uh, so the inside lighting looks super good. And then the outside mm -hmm. lighting looks really flat and stuff. It's just something that has always been a problem mm -hmm. for that. But uh, other games do it a lot too. And so uh, it kind of sounds like what this little thing that uh, Kyle worked on recently was that it, it kind of changes the lighting gradually so that, you know, as you, the further you go in, the obviously the darker it gets, but um, I, I like that they're considering this kind of a thing because it can mm -hmm. be really abrasive or at least it has been for me. Um, and so it's, it's, I wonder if, yeah. Yeah. I was just gonna say, I wonder if it's the same um, tool that they're using to diffuse the lighting as you go deeper in the water or like they talked about this in the well pond, right? Oh, it wasn't, interesting. it wasn't turned on at the time, but they said they have the ability to have the light diffuse more and more as you go down deeper. You might be onto the something thing. there that like, I mean, it would make sense that those systems are related, use the same tech. Seems so. the same. Yeah. It seems the same. Yeah. That, that's a great call out, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, also Joppa called out um, a few new additions recently as well. Um, more flora. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, obviously they're still working on even more flora, but um, again, this is stuff we haven't seen yet. Uh, so, and Java did say, you know, we'll be seeing it shortly or whatever, but this kind of just adds to this kind of cue that I have in my head of like all mm -hmm. these things that have been worked on and have had significant work on them, um, mm -hmm. that even though we're getting like promotional material, like I kind of talked about with the, their promo, um, where even those shots don't have the stuff we're talking about yet. Right. And so, you know, there's a part of me that kind of feels like this might just kind of hit all at once, you know? <laughs> um, It'd be interesting to see, um, to see a sort of completely new layer on top of the world, you know, so quickly from something that we just saw the new version of the world a couple months ago now. Well, there, and there are some details and stuff that might not, you know, be as impactful to the overall look of something. But I think like I've talked about the ground textures, like to, you know, a great extent, um, which those are still in progress as well. So uh, I can't wait to see those and the flora because I think just those two things are going to make the whole, the world look just dramatically different. Um, sure. And so uh, ha just knowing that those are kind of like just there, just <laughs> and just at mm -hmm. some point we're going to, we're going to see those. And I feel like the game's just going to look so much better all of a sudden. Um, and I'm excited for it. But so that was kind of confirmed that, yep, those are also in the queue. Those are, nice. yep. Um, new creature. I mean, this is something. <laughs> this is why I laughed when you started reading the last part. Because I thought, I thought we were on this, this line, but go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the Bronte turtle. The, Br <laughs> the Bronte turtle. <laughs> I don't know why, but that makes me laugh. I, I, I it, Until I actually see it, it. It's Dude. Squirtle in my mind. It's Squirtle. I don't know why. But Did someone posted something in the, in the, in the discord. I, I can't <laughs> share it cause it's in the wrong channel, but, uh, I'm sure it's not what this is, but there, it's, it's a joke. It's, it's really funny. Um, I don't know what this is, but it's obviously going to be its own, you know, unique creature, um, of some kind, but, uh, but obviously, you know, there's something else that they have, uh, up their sleeves. Um, also more crafting updates. Uh, I think Taham, who's the producer, so like he would know, uh, said some more tool updates are going to be coming down the, the pipeline for Nafel to utilize here in the next week or so. Um, That's right. And, yeah. uh, and, so, and he said that, I think, also with the knowledge of the optimizations and stuff that they're working on. So, you know, crafting's also coming along. It's like, it's one of those things, it's like they're just letting us know, like, yep, we're still, <laughs> we're still working on it. Yeah, well, it was important to give Neff a shout out on this stream, I think, because he wasn't there and, and uh, we haven't heard from him in quite some time. And, and it's easy to forget that crafting is a 
part of Pantheon and Nafel is a is a in, in incredibly talented and incredibly intelligent person um that knows crafting systems inside and out and uh, yeah we haven't heard anything from him for a, from a while and so they were sort of lamenting that he's been maybe held back like he's yeah he's just chomping at the bit to get some stuff done and they talked a lot about the queue you know in terms of giving people time to get development time in they have to allocate the time properly and not everybody's had as much time as the others so yeah yep Yep. And I mean, the crafting info on our end, though, it's funny because it always like comes and goes in waves. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, it, we'll sure. have like a couple months where it's just like all about <laughs> crafting and gathering. Um, and, and then, you know, it'll like just disappear for <laughs> a year <laughs> <for> a while, <laughs> a year and a half. <laughs> yep. yep. Um, also, and this is kind of a personal thing. Um, and it's funny because this is a question asked by Sir Medieval. Um, Sir Medieval. <laughs> Sir, sir, what? Sorry, how did you pronounce that? Sir, sir, sir medieval. Thanks, Med- Ronick. Medieval. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> if you if you listen to the stream, you'll know, guys. Um, but uh, <laughs> but a mentor system is still planned. Uh, they just can't give a timeline. Um, so it's it might still be like a post launch thing, which I would lament. But um, I I'm glad that they're still thinking about it, and I hope we can talk about it, or you know, hope they can talk about it. I mean. Um, sometime before launch because it's just important to me. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, let's see, character customization stuff. We talked about this a bit uh, a few weeks ago, right, with the with the human model redo a few months right, ago, right. I, I should say. Um, and this is nothing crazy, but they did confirm that they'll at least have sliders for things like height, um, as far as like the bigger, you know, changing bits. Um, and one note here is that they kind of explain that how granular they go is more of a factor of just what they want the constraints to be and not like limitations of the tech. Um, it's a good distinction, I think, just because uh, it would be one thing if they were going to say, well, you know, we're just not going to do any of that uh, fine tune customization stuff. We're just going to give you some presets. Um, and they confirmed that it will be more than that. Uh, there is going to be sliders. Um, just not as crazy as some other MMOs because uh, they they don't want to allow these like really crazy variations, right? I think that was yeah. made pretty clear. It's like they want you to look like your race um, within certain constraints, you know, crazy colors mm-hmm. or no crazy proportions no, or whatever. No super tall dwarves, <laughs> right? <laughs> Nothing like right. that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but they, the, the tech definitely is capable of it. So it was a nice little update that, you know, yep, there's going to be sliders and we have the stuff su- to support it. Um, it's just a matter of what we want to do. Right. Sure. Yeah. It was a good, it was a good clarification. All right. And, uh, can't remember if we already talked about this, but, uh, in chat, uh, Kyle mentioned that Steve got some basic swimming working, um, and like, you know, there's obviously way more to swimming than just moving, but, uh, but apparently they got some basic swimming working. Uh, it's just the rest is on hold while they kind of take care of, uh, you know, all the other water related <laughs> things on the docket, but <laughs> yeah. Hey, it, it's an update. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Small baby steps, right? Baby steps. Yep. And I, I would be remiss if I didn't point out literally the most important question that was answered. <laughs> <laughs> on the stream uh thank you random rob um but <laughs> we finally know what hair product ronick uses <laughs> so <laughs> magic move yeah he, so here's a word he was, from our uh, sponsor magic Mo- no i'm just kidding yeah. um, <laughs> have you had problems with your hair staying in place for more than 24 hours <laughs> th- this was yeah. such a funny point in the stream i <laughs> I, t- I don't want to linger on this too long but just the em- embarrassment and reluctant answering of ronick uh to that they would even pick this trolley <laughs> well trolley i mean it's 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 sort of the perfect encapsulation of what the stream actually was about. And it was about their interpersonal relationships. I mean, let's, oh. let's be honest. That's what this was about. This was about understanding the team. We talked about this at length on Pantheon plus you, um, because that was the, the most apparent and the biggest takeaway from this stream was how this team works together. And this, the, the jokes between them and the, the way that they, they enjoy, um, each other as, as people, not just coworkers, um, I think was really important. And, you know, everybody's got their thing. Everybody's got their little, you know, nuances and the things that make their, 
you know, make them fun and what's, you know, we can sort of take some jabs at and have fun with and that kind of stuff. And I absolutely loved it. So that is just, you know, just a good example of an encapsulation of the stream in, in its whole. Yeah, there was there was a, a good amount of ribbing <laughs> and yeah. and jokes and fun. Um, yeah. And so I, I think I got through like most of the actual like maybe informational bits. Um, yeah. Well, but... there's one thing you left out, though. We got to get this because this kind of combines informational and ribbing. So the whole thing about how you pronounce Seville. Okay, Seville Manor. Now, no. I need a whole video about the secrets of Seville Manor. So I have I have paid the price for this miscommunication. So it actually started earlier this week before the dev stream. JN, my 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 lore savior, <laughs> put out a tweet saying Seville is pronounced like devil. Just swap the D with an S. He and he took the fall for this. He took responsibility for it. And uh, it, I actually give credit to our our uh, our our adventure party member Grogu. Uh, is uh oh yeah he asked it yeah did say he's a fan of the work fan of jan's work wondering if he could explain how you came about or what language inspired the pronunciation of civil as of all and then jan clarified it so really good call out from them and if you listen to this part of the vr dev stream it is hilarious to hear how this to hear how (laughs) this played out because i mean joppa i think has the best line where he's like all of us he's like i don't even know how you could pronounce it like this in what world could it be pronounced like this he's like i want to see that document i want to see that email and jan's like no i'm burning it it's gone you'll never see it he's like, <laughs> it was the funniest thing ever because you and i talked about this and we had the exact same thing we're like this doesn't conform to any sort of grammar or linguistic rules and, and it was just the funniest thing it really um, was i just i love how at one point he kind of just throws his hands up he's like i make up a lot of names <laughs> <laughs> so so this has inspired this has definitely inspired me i'll talk about it in a minute but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get these pronunciations out we're gonna get them in jn's voice because i've re- i've learned from this whole fiasco you cannot rely on the written word to uh pronounce something unless it comes from its creator so we'll talk about that in a second speaking of jn i want a couple lore things that actually our friend wisen pointed out while in this thread took the opportunity to ask and these are just completely you know off you know tangent <laughs> lore bits that i yeah. wanted to throw in here so wisen said speaking of halflings is in older halfling buildings are we going to see an allotment for more height with shorter and shorter add-ons because basically the halflings are were cursed that caused their height to decrease over time <laughs> Chan said that's a very perceptive question however the curse was arrested prior to coming to terminus and modern halflings are no longer losing their height and then Wizen even took it a step further and asked a follow-up question. Uh, will we ever come to find out how each race came to be on Terminus? Uh, that's kind of a universal fade to black as far as interplanetary transit goes. And JN said, there may be a day when all is revealed, if there are alls to reveal, but that time is far off. For now, the fade to black is intentional. A world loses its intrigue if you know all its mysteries. Oh, so, dude. Very JN. And, very it, Jan. and it's so, this is just one one thing. If you get into the story of, of Pantheon, of, of Terminus, like this is, with, with all the lore we have, you know, which is a pretty significant amount over the years, mm-hmm. this is like such a key thing that I think even someone that like wasn't particularly interested would go like, yeah, but like how, like what, what's a collision, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and notice the absence of that descriptor. And uh, it's just one of my favorite things about how this whole story is played out. And, uh, and obviously it's intentional, um, as he says here. It's like, yep, mm-hmm. this is on purpose. This critical part <laughs> is on purpose. And it, you know what it does? It makes me want to play. Yeah, it makes you want to play. That's that's what it comes down to. That's where that's where reality and fantasy meet, right? The reality of wanting to play a game and the fantasy of having many many unknowns. So, I just can't get enough of that. Questions so, that need answering. Questions. So many questions. Uh let's let's give our overall just sort of wrap up this uh, news section, give some overall thoughts on the stream desert and I'll tell you basically the pros I really liked how this felt like the community and the viewers were getting an inside uh, part of a team meeting. It's a great sense of familiarity with them. Um, I loved what they how they specified about the uh, what the focus of the PA outcome was specifically optimizing that we talked about. Yeah, I'm yeah. really glad Joppa took the uh, 
chance to acknowledge the confusion about imminence because that was sort of a thorn in the side of some people, myself included. I didn't, you know, I didn't, it lingered, I guess. So wanting to show the game more and I, and I love that they resolved, like I said, the Seville mystery, yeah. um, in terms of cons, you know, it was an hour and a half and it, it was a conversation more than it was a development update. I think that again, I've said this before, this is their major platform. This is what people watch more than any of their other content. I think it would have been nice to have some, you know, like the models, like the Darkmoor models have something in there to sort of give those people who don't really, cause there's people out there who do not care one little bit about their team dynamic and and that's i'm not trying to be mean i'm, I'm just saying like that's a, there's a contingent well, of yeah, community that, that, that looks is at a stream like this true. and if they use this a stream like this to bolster their opinion that there's no development going on right like it's and it's it's just out there that's the reality so they don't always have that greater context and when you do have that greater context the picture is much much different but it's like this you know what have you done for me lately approach attitude that some people have these streams can be a little difficult to swallow for those people. So I would say that there's that side of it. And, um, you know, again, these are fun to listen to and I'm here for it. But, uh, I think that there's also the downside being there's going to be some people that are very dissatisfied by this kind of a stream. So what about you? Well, uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm maybe it's just, I'm still kind of riding the high of just like the feel good, all the wholesomeness of last night. Um, or I should say uh, Thursday, <laughs> but um, <laughs> a lot of what was talked about was still technically an update, I would argue. Um, and I know it did go long, so it wasn't all uh, hour and a half, you know, a good chunk of that was joking around, but uh, you know, things that they did say, uh, yeah, technically an update, even if the update is, yeah, we're still working on that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, without any f new footage or anything, you had to really kind of keep an ear out. And, and, you know, usually it wasn't anything super new or big. Um, but yeah, like I said, technically it's still an update. Um, and the, like the gist I get is that they're, they're just kind of heads down, you know, they're, they're, you know, either the artists are, are working on cranking out the assets or, you know, programming and design. They're addressing all the stuff from the last PA test and, and more. Um, you know, so that when the, the co-stream comes, uh, it can be as good as possible, obviously. Um, so yeah, right. it, yeah. it, it might not have been like this really shiny, impressive stream. Um, and, and yeah, I'm sure plenty will complain about it. Right. But I think there's something about like seeing their morale high as it was, um, can still be really encouraging to, to a lot of viewers. Like even just going through the contents uh, comments today, uh, just kind of getting a general gist is like, it seems like it resonated with a lot of people. Um, That's absolutely true. I saw that too. And I, I I'm glad you brought that up because <clears throat> it was, I wasn't sure what to expect. Uh, to be honest, I was looking at it and I was like, I wonder what people thought about that. But you're right. It seems like, it seems like it did resonate with a lot of people. So good on them. Yep. But, but yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts is like, Obviously, yeah. I wouldn't want every stream to be like this, but the yeah. timing of it and the uh, genuineness of it uh, mm -hmm. are are something that uh, you know I I didn't know I I needed, <laughs> but uh, I I, <laughs> yeah. I felt really good about it. Um, as uh, as one of the folks in chat put it, or one of the comments, I think it was, it was like this was this stream hype was low but morale is high yeah and that's a really good way to put that actually i, I, like I that love that too. yeah i loved it yeah so that's that's my general gist very very fair very very fair and uh good good summary as well so so let's wrap up the news there and let's do a quick look at the calendar for us here at pantheon plus for the week coming up through uh, november 14th through to the 20th so we, as we said just a moment ago we are still playing embers adrift Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. on our Twitch channel, and on Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on our YouTube channel. That's uh, the MMO 101 and 201 groups, really enjoying ourselves there. On a Wednesday, so I mentioned it a second ago, I'm doing a video about pronunciation, <laughs> Derek's Tome of Pronunciation in Pantheon for some of the more commonly uh, mispronounced Is it going to be in the, in the form of conjunction junction? 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is, but maybe <gasps> probably. Oh my gosh. But I what's for some reason to? feel older than you suddenly. Um but oh, anyone anyone uh shout out conjunction junction. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it is. And maybe I'll be uh, like somehow secretly like referencing something I'm not even aware of. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's going to be basically a collection of JN saying the actual words that uh, we often see on the page, but don't often hear. So look for that on Wednesday on our YouTube channel. On Friday, our friend Redbeard Flynn is back with another video on his MMOs Aren't Dead series. He's focusing on Lord of the Rings Online this time. And I look forward to that. Friday night, our friend Sparrow is streaming on her Twitch channel. That's uh, She's playing some P99. That's 6.30 p.m. Eastern on her Twitch channel, like I said. Saturday, as always, Nathan Napalm, Cringe Pony TV. Season 2 is in full swing right now. Every episode is cringier than the one that preceded it. <laughs> so <laughs> tune in for that if you're into that. We got Plant Man. We got, you know, the Barefoot Syndrome. We got MMO Cop. I mean, everything. It's just one new uh one new character he's already got stuff show. brewing from uh from this stream i can tell you that much i heard the magic move thing when he when we were on stream when we were on pantheon plus you i i think he's doing something with that magic move uh hair product so it's too we'll easy see. it's too easy it's too easy <laughs> and speaking of too easy that is it for this week's vr news and notes the pantheon community is full of cool projects new people and things that are just worth sharing hmm? What's this over here? <gasps> Look at that. So let's see what we can find in this week's Community Spotlight. All right, we've got a short but sweet Community Spotlight this week. Um, first off, got to shout out my guy, Mr. Redbeard Flynn. He finally did it. <laughs> he gathered all of his courage and he made a video about his personal concerns with Pantheon. Yep. Um, yep. you know, I don't need to get super into this, but all I'll say is like, I'm really proud of him. And I think it was a really healthy video. Uh, he's got some so great too. points. So yeah, he, he made, he made points that are all absolutely valid. You know, it's not like it was done in a, in a disingenuous showy kind of way, um, it, or done in a, in a joking kind of way. Like he's acknowledging absolute truths that, and if you, if you think that, anybody who follows this game doesn't have concerns or fears. Like if you think we, me and Desiree have no concerns or fears, right. Then you're not paying attention. And, and of course we do, of course we do, you know, but like, and, and Redbeard is, is brave to make a video like that. And, and no, you know, potentially that, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to hard, you don't want to be, uh, unnecessarily critical, but you also want to be honest. Right. So it's, it's always finding that balance and he did a great job with it. Yeah, it really did. It all, like kind of speaks for all of us <laughs> in a sense of like, you know, the, maybe one video a, a year or something uh, that's like, yeah, this is my concerns. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we can move on. <laughs> There's more good things yeah. to talk about than than bad things. And uh, he just had yep. a really even take. But, um, but yeah, super great. You should go watch it. Um, it's It's still uplifting, I would say. Uh, so very, very good. Uh, and then we just kind of have two things from Sir Medieval. Uh, one's easy. It's just a watch party for the stream we're talking about. Um, uh, so it's, it's a watch party, right? Um, I'm mm -hmm. sure by, by the time this goes live, um, Basgrim will also have his watch party. Uh, I th yeah. he does his like while we record basically. So I saw, um, I saw him go live couple hours ago so yes he's definitely okay done okay it. cool then then that should uh that should be in there um and then uh a more original one um this is sir medieval doing the keepings of castigue part two um mm -hmm. again this isn't the main feature of this series um that's going to be part three but i this is where it starts getting getting gripping <laughs> right um <laughs> yeah. part two starts laying some things on the table that really gets you engaged and i'm i'm super i'm ready for it man he's got another you know voice actor um as well doing doing the reading and uh it's, it's yeah exciting. i gotta listen to this one i haven't i haven't had a chance to catch this one yet to 
to listen to it, but uh, well, I'll probably do that I tonight. I don't want to ruin it, you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I think I know the story. I th- yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm familiar with the story. You know the story. <laughs> not, no spoilers here. But uh, this is definitely the the calm before the storm, which hopefully he can finish up part three, which is the a massive undertaking. Um, it is. Because the, these, this has just been so fun, you know. Um, I've I've missed Chris Kane <laughs> for a long Me time. Too. Me um, too. And, it's been forever. And Sir is kind of doing his 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 take, and it's just really fresh and um happy happy to have it. Uh, and I'm just super happy that he's into the lore, right? Um, mm-hmm. But uh, surprisingly, that is going to be it for this week's community spotlight. Sit back and relax. It's time for the lore you know. All right, so we have four lore keepers this week who you'll see on the screen right now, which is great to see more people engaging with the lore. That's what I had hoped for with last week's questions, which were, of course, uh, what is the name of the planet on which Pantheon takes place? And what is the current year when we uh, all get in there at launch? So the answers were Terminus is the name of the planet and the year is 987 IH. So let me just read you a little bit from the Frail Age. This is over at PantheonMMO.com in the lore section. It says, quote, I shall close this brief recounting of the story of Terminus with the second void of the Deicide War, that of Lament. I have mentioned the Celestial Boundary and its effect. We have seen it grievously abused by the Ravaging Lord and mercifully circumvented by the sacrifice of Janavi. There is the account of the Myrrh goddess Cyrenae saving her people despite the boundary, though at tragic cost, and the persistent possibility that the war wizards were created by the pantheons of each race which would require such magnificent collusion amongst the gods that I struggle to embrace it. And then at the bottom of that page, it says, Thus I submit to the reader in the year 987, if us Brun Hilgen, <laughs> or IH, we can do precious little but reach for the unseen hand. So there's your answers for last week's question. And we need now, to get uh, uh, JN to come in here and, and read if us Brun Hilgen and, uh, and make sure... you we- just. You just reminded me that I need to include that in my video. Uh, that is a that is an excellent point because I struggle with that word every time I go to record a lore video and I've used tried to say that it takes me like three takes because it is not a naturally. And that's why we can just say IH nine eighty seven IH. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that it's a very nice number and somehow memorable even to me. <laughs> so nine eighty seven <laughs> yeah. IH. Good job, people. Yeah, 987 IH. That's all you need to know. Uh, so here's the questions for this week. Number one, what is the name of the only raid level creature that VR has shown? And secondly, what is the name of the realm they inhabit? So again, you can find the answers to this. Now, I don't know if you, you can find the answers to this at pantheonmmo.com, to be honest with you. You might have to dig a little deeper on this one uh, because it's definitely in the lore library. If you look on our YouTube channel here, Look in the lore playlist. You'll find me talking about it. Um, <clears throat> you may have to dig a little deeper into their VR's YouTube channel to find this answer. Uh, but it's the only raid level creature that they've shown. It's fairly, you may have seen it quite recently. In fact, in the course of doing this show, you may have actually seen it. I'll leave it. <laughs> See, I was going to so, give a, a, a hint as well, but uh, we don't don't need. To was it the same that. hint, or, or oh were you no, I was just different? I was going to say that it's something we haven't seen officially this year. That's true. That is true. We haven't seen it officially this year. So you can leave a comment on the video or you can join the Discord and leave a comment in our Lorian No channel. You can also DM me if you want to uh, keep it and not spoil it for other people, but either way is fine. Uh, just, you know what, join the Keepers and uh, get, your lore, uh, get your lore knowledge up to snuff. So with that, that is the Lore You Know. All right, so uh, another another show uh, in the books, Desmond. I forgot to mention in our calendar, and I wanted to bring it up here that uh, we do have Pantheon Plus U this week too. After parting the veil, right, Desmond? You're going to be yep. Uh, we're going again. Another one. <laughs> we're going doing again. It again. <laughs> You've become such a natural at doing this. I was telling you last night after the after Pantheon Plus U that feels like you've been doing this forever. So smooth, no glitches, no hiccups, no nothing. You're just a natural. I, I, I despise uh, hiccups. So um, <laughs> I do anything in my power to... Which uh, you told me before we started recording. Yeah, I literally had hiccups before we started recording. And, and yeah. 
uh, <laughs> but but out. yeah, uh, we're 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 doing that as well. I'll, hopefully, yeah, we'll we'll get it together. <laughs> we'll get, we'll it, get together. it together. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you everyone as always for joining us again. And uh, like I said in the intro, uh, stay tuned for more giveaways. Stay tuned for more uh, content. Uh, and uh, if you have any comments or anything like that, you can leave them uh, below. You can also, like I said, join our Discord. Uh, be sure to share the show, let people know about it, all that good stuff. But another week closer to our eventual landing in Terminus in the year 987H. And Desrin, thank you. And thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Have a great week. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Pantheon Plus Rewind. Pantheon Plus is not affiliated with Visionary Realms. Be sure to check out our Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube channels under the name Pantheon Plus. You can follow Theric at Pantheon Theric on Twitter and Desrin at Desrin Does also on Twitter. And you can stay up to date with all things Pantheon at www.pantheon.plus. Until next time, cheers and thanks for listening.